much thing. Me hear the door now. Me open the door. No try to sip and spot. In a one tight shots. I show her fat back. I no mention on a front. Me car around. There's a fat. We lay down at the bed. Comfortable and relax. Me fling with the shots. Me no know where to drop. She said, let her out. I don't want no foolishness. So don't climb for me and give me no one minute. Me say, easy darling. And don't rush it. Cause anything you want, you shall surely get it. Me say, five minutes gone. And me still have. Uh, today, of course, this is the moment that you all have been waiting for as we now will be placing uh, dancehall reggae artist and lecturer in the spotlight to reveal the story behind his big story to help understand the culture of reggae music coming from the island of Jamaica. A pleasant good day to you. How are you doing? Wag one. What's the vibes? What's the energy like, lecturer? Yeah, I send greetings first in the most high, to the most high and might to wake up this morning and give her the greatest thing in life, which is life. There's nothing greater than life. I welcome everyone and I send a greetings to you, Fanta. You're the best. Yes, Fanta. Fanta Black, you're the best. I respect you to the max. I'm big up all entertainer that in the world, singers of instrument, writers and performers, anyone who en enter in the music fraternity, I give a respect to them, yeah? Once again, I want to say thank you so much, lecturer, for taking time out of your busy schedule and allowing us to place you in this spotlight as you're about to reveal the story behind your big story to help understand the culture of reggae music. Uh, it's a pleasure having you. Once again, welcome. But, yeah, thank you very much. You're most welcome. And of course, lecture, let's take us way back. when, Because you are one of the foundation artists who've laid down that foundation, that great music that today we enjoy all across the world. You are one of the artists who was instrumental in uh, laying down that great foundation. From back in the 80s, right throughout, you dominated that genre. Do you know what I mean? You gave the public... It's upon its lecture. Tell us, where were you? Where did you come from as a child Me. growing up in Jamaica? And of course, as always, it's always very interesting to hear your time growing up as a child and in your own community. As a child still, is a lot of people don't really know where lecturer come from. Because as a child in Jamaica, who grow without a father, we grow with a mother. Bless her soul, she's no, she's not, she's no longer with us. Bless her soul. But we grow without mother, without father. So as a child growing up, I really towile. We really grow up. 35 Ebony Road. You know? Towile. But because of certain times in those days, when it comes to politics, it was like life or death. So our mother never want we to really go that way. So she move us out. And she even bring us to another place where it was even, I would have said, the same level with towel, um, feather bed lane. That is in Spanish town. And then we move on. And we move all over. Because our mother did like, you, you ever see those duck? You ever see a big duck that taking care of the dildils? Mm -hmm. My mother was like that, like a shield over us, you know. So she always tend to bring us to the safer place until I end up back in St. Mary. That's original where my mother come from. St. Mary, Islington, same place as the Cape Town, the whole of them come from. Yeah, St. Mary, mm. Islington. Yeah, cause there, my mom born in St. Mary, but she leave St. Mary when she was about 12 years old. And then she turned us back there. But I never liked the running up and down. So I did kind of rest with a big sister, my mother's first child, Sister Dimper. All of us respect her. Yeah. So mm -hmm. I just stay, I just stay with her in, in St. Mary and attend the same school as Capitan. Um, Comanche, what if artist? Um, Islington Secondary, and then from there again, because it's a thing that 
when you're a Kingstonian, it's like country becomes boring to you when you're a Kingstonian. That in those, in those days, I'm not talking now where everything is in country, is in town now. You understand? You never used to all have a street light mm. and those things in country in those days, you know? So I run, come back to town, but I never reach town. I reach Portmore. And there, when I was in St. Mary, um, Malika, I, I did like DJ, because me's a cartoon from me, born, you know. I, I'm, I'm the cartoon of the family, you know, give jokes, sing, dance, get money from a little bit. But when I got to St. Mary you now, there was a sound, a, a man over there that fixed amplifier and he would have a little sound named Tippertone. A youth named Carly. He would have a little sound over there named Tippertone. So what he used to do you now, he used to string up the sound every Friday down I'm shop and we go down there and hold it away. No one, make noise and we met DJ and we met DJ and we met DJ till I come, I come to, to, to Portmore and really now even before you get there to the sound system culture um yeah. uh, we would like to understand we'll get to we'll get to that point where you're going to talk to us about uh the culture of uh, the sound system coming from the <laughs> island of uh, Jamaica but however yeah. uh, let's go back to uh, in the beginning obviously you mentioned that uh, you would have uh, frequently, you know, I mean, changed residence uh, for various reasons. Uh, yeah. And yeah. Uh, how did that really affect your education? How were you able Definitely. to balance very, your education, very good your question. school work with uh, that frequent moving all over Jamaica? Yeah, very good question. Because to tell you the honest truth, I was very, 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 very bright in school. Very bright. Because as everyone know, me have a big head, you know. So when, the, you know, in school, you can stick a nickname on yourself. Depends on how you react when the kids call you. You understand? So when I was going to school, they give me every name. My name was Wharf Dog, Big Head, Mandora Coconut. But what I do, I was very, very clever. I answer to all of the names. So the kids weren't getting any fun out of it. So it never really stick because they're not getting any fun. Because when you make a nickname on yourself, it's you make the nickname because if, you, if the kids them find it that you don't like it, then they're going to stick it and they're going mm. to gonna, they're gonna provoke you with it. So I used to mm. answer to every name. But my teacher used to tell me, when they call you Big Head, tell them it's brains in your head because... No school. I remember when I was in about grade three, I come second in the class. There was a class of about, I would say 25, 26, and I mm. come second. And the teacher was very, very upset. You understand? And the second I come, she said, no one in the class supposed to beat me. You understand? Because I was very, very bright. Come straight up, right up. Mm -mm. So, my mom now didn't really have it in those days to really send us to good school. You understand? Because mm. it's not like with she, she did. It's, it's a lot of us to look after. My mom have 13 of us in her. Mm. So it's a lot of us to look after. And she never really have it to send us to school. But I was brilliant. So it kind of, it, it didn't affect my education because I'm to this day I'm not stupid I'm not dumb I, I, I can read I can write I can do things but it it's like set you back from settling in school mm. you, you're always changing school because you go you go you go different different it's happened that's one time I go to I go to a school two times the way my mom move, moving with us a school on St. John Road, I think that place name in, in, in St. Catherine, St. John Road, mm. named Friendship. I enter Friendship School two times. In school, two times. I got to that school because my mom moved, got there, and then she moved, come back, and she moved, got there. But it didn't, I wouldn't say it affect my reading, but where I would be, in education, it kind of affect it. You know what I mean? 
Mm. Yeah, but I move on and we go on and we go on and we go on and Cause my mom, my mom was a lady also, never, she never done. She's not one of those ladies that was done. Cause it's my mom teach me to read and write, teach me to read clock, teach me to, to do much. Cause she always say, call, call yourself the bigger number and use your finger and your toe. Like when she mm. give you something to her. So my mom, my mom wasn't like, like one of those parents that couldn't help herself. You know what I mean? She could help herself and then she'll help us. Yes, but... Well said. Now, all that time, during that time when you frequent resident in Jamaica, uh, you were quite, you know I mean, moving house from, from house. And uh, at what point did you, as, a, as an individual, come to that realization that music was part of you and, and, and the passion that you would have had within yourself uh, that you would have want to definitely pursue music as in a career how early during your life this uh, uh this consciousness came up came about well to tell you the honest truth is from a, a music were born in me because as i tell you when i was a kid even today one of my big sister asked me if i remember someone and i said no i can't remember him That's, she said when you lick a bit, it used to come for you to go and sing and you get money. So music wasn't really something I take, I was aiming for as a career, but it was inside of me. I love music. You understand? So music is, a, is like a, a, a thing that is, is part of me. I used to love music. Yeah, play drum. I used to play drum and sing and dance and it's me music was inside of me but when i really take music seriously is when i go to i would say islington school in saint mary in islington school because they used and what to happened have... what transpired at that school that got you that consciousness that music was something that you would have uh, later on pursued is is you remember that um, Barry G. You remember Barry G and the sound name Wadat? Yes. Barry G came to his school one night into a, into a contest. He'd have a DJ contest at his school. Wadat was playing there. And all my friends in Albany, St. Mary, Islington, Sport Road, they said Manly. Because at that time, I don't name lecturer, name Manly. They said Manly. You can't you can enter in a car. You can't help yourself. You can't help yourself. And there was a little youth from Friendship. I can't remember his name, but he was a little short black youth. I go up there, but in those days, I never used to write lyrics. I used to just mm. rhyme lyrics, rhyme words, and put them together, you know? But that guy that won the night is like, he was writing because I'm sure I can remember a DJ something about a black star liner that is going Africa. Yeah? Wicked mm -hmm. lyrics. It tear down the place, tear down the place. So, and that from that now, I was telling myself because I feel nice to the response what I get, you know? Because it was a lot of us, and I think I come about third. It it it, it was a lot of us and First round and the vote out and second round, the vote out, third round. And I was still there even when it come to the last three. I was still there. And all I was doing is making lyrics on the spot. It's on the spot lyrics I was making. So at that time now, I know I can do it. But at the same time, I don't take it serious as yet until I go mm. to Portmore. It's when I reach Portmore now. Then I take this music thing serious. And I go to Portmore. Um, um, there was a song over there that named Love Child over in Portmore. And Love Child was like the top song in Portmore. The top song. It's like, oh, you have Stone Love that run Jamaica. Love Child was running the entire Port more, not just independent city. The sound is from independent city, but not just independent city. It was running the entire Port more. It was Port more sound. 
That mm. sound, you don't have to print flyers to go to that dance car. Every weekend, people just ask, where's Love Child playing? And they, and they find it. So the, the, the gentleman and, and Love Child, I used to go around and I used to beg the selector, the mic, and DJ, beg the selector, the mic, and DJ. Because in those days, we never used to voice tune before we dj in dance. We never used to do that. We used to voice the tune that the crowd go for in the dance. That's the tune we go to the studio and voice. So what happened now? A DJ, one night a DJ there, and I was DJing a style named Asman Skadi. But at the same time, it was lyrics on spot. It was this lyrics and spot, but the crowd really go for it. Like, cause it's, it's like a dance and I was DJing and moving like a, like a racehorse jockey and tell them what to do. You understand? And, and the crowd go for it. And then in the morning, the selector was telling, was telling the, the, the owner for the sound that this little guy can DJ. In. And then I start follow it, follow it, follow it. Till one day he said, I can't get a work on the sound. So when I start working on the sound now, Professor Nuts was on the sound. Mm -hmm. Professor Nuts was on the sound. And Professor Nuts now never really an open art artist. He, 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 he never opened his hand and art to me. You understand? Because he have a lot of lyrics, but I have lyrics on the spot. And he never show me what he do for his lyrics. So when nuts like nuts don't come to dance, I would talk two of his old lyrics. You know what I mean? Cause I, I used to talk his, his, his Professor Nuts lyrics. The gentleman now that is that opened my eyes to music now really show me the ins and the out of music now is Papa San. Mm. Uh, in those days when sound string up, fancy, all artists used to just pass through, you know? The only person the owner pay is who assigned to the, to the sound. You get pay. But you used to just pass through. If Licka Jana passed through and we sing a song, Papa Santa passed through him, DJ, Josie Wheeler passed through him, DJ, Charlie Chaplin, them only want to hear a sound and it's a good sound. Yeah? Mm. Artists pass through dance and them just stop and them DJ and them gone. Yeah? So Papa San used to follow Love Child, but it's not Papa San sound. Papa San sound at that time was creation. But he used to just love the sound or the crowd follow the sound and it's a little era sound where nice. It, it a play mm. nice. So Papa San used to like me. He used to really like our, the, the vibes and the agony what a DJ in, you know? But Papa San know that I didn't have any lyrics. Till I think Papa San organized for Professor Nuts to get, get a work on, on creation. But as I tell you again, he's not a guy that opens his hands and art to people. The Professor Nuts is a good DJ, don't get me wrong. Top class DJ, very good DJ, lyrical, very good. But he like praise. He don't want no one else around him to get praise. He like the praise for himself. So that used to be a little trouble in his way with me because I used to care, even when I use his lyrics, I get a bigger forward than him with his own lyrics. So he never liked that. You understand? So Papa San get a work for him, and the same thing, him and Papa San can't agree on Creation. But Creation Sound is like Papa San Sound, because the owner for Creation Sound, till this blessed day, that's Papa San's wife. The owner that owns the sound, Mother G and, and Chinaman, daughter, till this day is Papa San's wife. So it's like Papa San Sound. You understand? Because Papa San was going out with Debbie. So now, like Lecturer, you also mentioned that uh, while uh, Papa Sun was the one who really taught you the ins and outs of music, now for the benefit of our listeners, uh, 
when you say the ancient art, explain, go in details. Yeah, that's where what I, that's exactly what I, you own about when you say he was the one who taught you all the aims and art and the, oh. to really enhance on your, your talent and make you into the artist that we see here today. Uh, yeah. Explain and expand on that a bit. To yeah, it's, it's, like, it's like you find a gold coin. But the dirt is on the gold coin, and you brush off the dirt, let the let the, the gold shine. Yeah, I was already, I I have the 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 the, the, the feet. I I have the potential. You understand? But the way of it, I didn't know. So his son show me now how to write lyrics. He he sit me down and show me. How to write lyrics. And then now, uh, what happened now? Son have me under his arm like a liquor. Apprentice them those those days we call it. He's the teacher. I am the apprentice. You understand? So if son, if son would never go, we Mother G used to have a big truck that carried the sound. So at night time, we used to go in that truck, sit down, and son would write a lyrics and let me hear the lyrics. And then say, write part two of this lyrics. So just in, if, if people don't understand, like San will say, many, many girls nowadays, them love many girls, many, many girl. Me would say, many, many men nowadays, them love many men, love many, 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 many. That's how it used to go. If San say up the hill, I say down the hill. If San say black, I said white. Because even the letter that you see I write, the letter, the, the, Dear Mama, it was son idea. He wrote his father. I wrote my mother. So that's the way we used to combinate with things. So, so son showed me how to write lyrics. He said, write it like a story. So if in my days when I'm DJing, if I DJ part of a lyrics and stop, it confused the people because they used to say, finish it. Because I want to hear what happened. It's like a story I'm telling. That's how Sam used to write lyrics. So he used to, he, his son showed me that. So the, 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 the ins and the out of reggae music with me being as good as I was in, in the 80s, 90s, it all lean on Sam and Papa Sam. He was the one who really opened my eyes to it. And during that time, how easy was it to walk through the doors of a studios, getting the opportunity to record music? No, an man. It, no. It, it, in those days, let me tell you what happened in those days now. Even around jammings, we used to have a thing that named audition. Yeah? Jammings have two persons in a studio that take audition. You have to DJ or sing, let that person hear you first. Then they will go to Jamins and they said, he can get a booking. Then Jamins would book you to come and voice. But most of the time when we were voicing is the lyrics that we see people go for. You know, like if you go to dance and you DJ something and you say, it really wake up the crowd then that's the lyrics we go to the studio with. So in, in those days, not like now, it was dance hall, studio. Now it's studio, dance hall. But in those days, it was dance hall, studio. So we used to go to the dance hall first, DJ the lyrics, then go to the studio and vice the lyrics. Let's and in those, days, in those days, in those days, Fanta, we never used to DJ weren't so prevalent with special. We never used to do special DJ. The singer used to do the special singers and the sound man used to cut the version. So when you go to dance and you hear a singer singing about a, a, a sound, then the DJ come in on the flip side, where we call the flip side, and they will say the version. So you will have singers in those days is mostly singers was doing special. 
is mostly singers. Johnny Asburn, a youth named King Everell, Leroy Gibbons, Leroy Smart, um, Aicho Candy, Pad and Tony. Those are the guys who used to do the special for the sound and many more singers. Yeah, Prince Junior, they used to sing Woody Noble, bless his soul, rest in peace, and, and a lot more. Singers, now, for those then, persons out there who might not know what is a DJ, what is the difference between a DJ and a singer? Again, for those out there who might not all right. know. The singer is the vocalist. The singer is the vocalist. And the DJ is like the one who rap, what they would call rap. So the singer is the vocalist. He sings. And then the DJ is the one who like rap with DJ. Yeah. So in And in, back in, in that time, Electra, what are some of the things that would <laughs> inspire you to come up with uh, that uh, melodious lyric that we hear coming from your your songs? What talk to us, you know? I mean, what would All right. inspire you? Punani too sweet. No, that's what I tell you. I was clever from I was small, man. So the brains is working. I went to a, I went to a play. As I, even till now, I love play. Even till now. You know, like like Oliver Samuel's plays. Yeah, I used to like mm. them. So I went to a play named... Oh, what's that name of that play now? I can't remember the play that I went to. But there was a pastor in there that preaching... And the pastor said, Master God, where you put in a puna and make it so sweet? If you put little more, every man would have dead from diabetes. Scandal. The play name is Scandal. Scandal. And I write just that down on a bit of paper in, in, the, in the audience. I write that, that down in the theater. I write that down on a bit of paper. So when I come home now, I have to build something around that to fit that little piece in. I have to build a story around that little bit that I write down to fit that story in. So that's how that story wrote. That's how that lyrics wrote. And, and, that, and that's how I used to write most of my lyrics. I used to remember, I even used to ask my mom to give me some joke, and my mom could give jokes. Yeah? So I used to ask her to give me jokes and she used to say, why you want jokes? I said, I'm going to write the lyrics on the joke that you give me. And she gave me a few and I write some lyrics. Even a even tune where I have my um, lyrics that I have when I, I boom ride. Boom ride is a serious thing. It's my mom give me that joke. Two guys was booming ride and they, they see a truck, take the truck and rain was falling and they take the truck and they go in the truck back and they see the coffee in there and get frightened. And when the when the, the truck drive, 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 they see the coffee top lift up and ask if rain stop. Yeah, the, yeah. But as a man was on the truck before them, go in the coffee and lay down because the truck, the, 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 the rain was falling. And I, I make a lyrics out of that. That's how I make lyrics. All right. I, uh, I write thank it. you so much for that uh, lecture. Of course, my name is Fonte Black and I'm talking to dancehall reggae artist, lecture place him in his spotlight to reveal the story behind his big story and of course we will be going for a song break and also we want to uh, acknowledge that we are also live on Facebook that's on UVC radio on Facebook and we encourage all our viewers to share this live stream continue sharing this live stream now in the background in the music break we'll be hearing the song Punani Too Sweet and of course uh, a lecturer just uh, uh, gave us the story behind that song. You know, I mean, it was a, a, a play that he saw back in the 80s, of course. Uh, so let's get straight into the song, Punani, Too Sweet by Lecture. Now let you out. I can tell us. 
Shout out to all our viewers on Facebook. Uh, we are streaming this uh, live interview on Facebook. And that's at UBC Radio, and that's on Facebook. Uh, and of course, uh, we want to say welcome uh, uh, back, uh, lecture, uh, the song in the background, Punani, uh, too sweet. <laughs> but of course, uh, this song, uh, of course, was one of uh, a big hit back in the 80s. You could have heard that song played in all corner shops and all uh, buses. Uh, Every dance hall, uh, you would have heard that song over uh, sound system, uh, radio, etc. Lecturer. Yeah. Did you ever, at any point, thought that song would have been so big out there? What was yeah. your meant? No, no. You know, you know, if I tell you the truth, in 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 our time of vice in tune, because let me tell you something, Fancy, no producer. The greatest producer in the world, Channel One, King Jammings, Bobby Digital, Tubbies. No producer, no one number one tune. They can think this one sound like a it. Yeah? But they cannot tell you this is a number one tune. Or else, every producer would produce pure number one tune. They don't know when the tune is a number one. The tune you think not going to do good. Is the tune that do good. The tune that you think this should go off is the tune that stay behind. So no producer, no a number one tune. And the thing is, when I do this tune, I was I was I wasn't even thinking of anything. Cause in those days, fans, we the artists in our time was just happy to do songs just to hear it play. We don't we, we, nothing else. We never think of no billboard. We never think of no number one. We never think of no chart tune. We just think of doing tune and hear it play in dance hall. Nothing else we never think of. Nothing else. So I wasn't even thinking of anything. But one night, I was uptown. And I hear, I hear the tune start and stole of uh-uh. Uh, 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 uh. So I stopped. I said, wait, that's so, that voice sound like my own, you know? And then I hear the tune start playing. So I said, the tune release. And that tune pull up that night about seven times. So I think it was this guy, I soon tell you him name. He sing, the wickedest time when we in a fall. The girl, them start to ball. Who done sent telegram? Them a sent a postcard. I can't remember his name. Um, him, Ronnie Tweet. Ronnie Tweet. Ronnie Tweet said to me, Selectra, if two love pull up this, you know, a gun, you gun, boss, your boss. If two love pull up this same time, your boss. And then, you know, it just, it just, it just took off. But I do, I did that song first. For Gemini, you know, I put that song as a special for Gemini, and that's how 
Jammings hear the, the tune because in, in those days it was just Jammings is the studio where all sound go to cut special. It was Jammings. It's either Tubbies or Jammings. Tubbies or Jammings. There weren't a lot of students. I just, I think three main students, four, four main students. Tubbies, Jammings, Black Scorpio, and Arrows was the four main students, but Jammings was the top one. You know, Jamins was the top one. So when you actually uh, saw the the results of uh, that song, and people taking on to it, and it was playing all around on all almost all sound system in Jamaica, and uh, it was in the dance hall. How did you feel as an individual, I, and what I, did this song actually do for you towards I, and help develop I, your musical? Yeah, career? I'm going to get a nice joke now. The first time that song played. Apart from hearing it at Stone Love, you remember I tell you I did do it for Gemini and a dub plate. And mm. Gemini play over Independent City that night into the park. And when Gemini put on that song, I was just walking all over in the dance so people could know that is not me DJing, it's my record playing, the way I was feeling proud, you know? I, I was saying yeah. that's me on dub plate. You know what I mean? It's not me. It's not me singing. It's, it's, the, it's the dub plate playing. So I was just walking all around in the dance. The people see right. me and say, yes, you know. So those feelings are, 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 are very nice feelings, you know, in those days. To hear a song playing with you on the radio, to hear a song playing with you in the dance hall. Worse when they say, what they used to do, if they start playing the song and the artist is there, any artist, not just me, they're playing the artist song, they would pull up the song and let the artist come and give it live. You understand? Don't matter which sound. From you are there and the selector know you are there. And you play and your uh, song. And what, what sort of opportunities did that create for you as an artist? Uh, did it create yeah. a wider opportunities allowing you to perform on stage or talk to her. Exactly. It 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 helped you because maybe when they call you to do that song, you don't do that one. You do you do a next one where even wicked on that on that song. And you don't know who is in the dance. A promoter could in the dance, a producer could in the dance, a sound man could in the dance, you don't know. You understand? So it kind of opened a way for you when they used to do it that way.
they did do it now. Me move, me move, no jazzy pat. In a one tight chart, so she walk fast back. I no mention on a puppy car around there's a fat. We lay down at the bed, comfortable and relaxed. Me fling with the shots, me no know where drop. She say lecturer, I don't want no foolishness. So don't climb for me and give me no one minute. Me say easy darling, Anna, don't push it. Cause anything you want, you shall surely get it. Me say five minutes gone and me still are. I do apologize, listeners. Uh, sincerely, uh, we encountered some uh, technical difficulty, but we're back with the artist, lecture, Wagwan. Yeah, yeah. It's only God do not make a mistake, you know. And his man yeah, thinks lecture, so. Wagwan. Yeah, yeah, hear me? Yes, of course. We could hear you live, live. Uh, yeah, just respect, share, We do respect. apologize again. For, yeah, uh, apology, apology, apology. Uh, problems yeah. that we've encountered. Who is this? It. Yeah. We apologize so yes, like for that. Saying, uh, to us, you were telling us about all the stories uh, behind your big story, and uh, yeah. that song really was one of the songs who've uh, allowed you to uh, got uh, big on your career. And you didn't have no expectation that this song would have been massive out there, but you no. took it to survive nonetheless. You know what I mean? And no. you've been humble with it, uh, um, lecturer. Um, what really kept you humble as 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 someone who really had the highlight? You were really trending at it back in the eighties. Uh, you were taking, you know, over I always. Uh, but, but yet still, you were able to remain humble and grounded. What? Yeah, that's what that's how that's how I am. And that. <laughs> I that's how I am in a fan so even till now, you know. You know, sometimes I go to dance, nowadays dance, and I see some guys doing things, you know? And I just look and I say, wonderful, wonderful. Because you see in life, you don't know. Original. You must always remember where you're coming from. Because you can get lost and you have to turn back. Yeah? Don't think on where you're going. Think on where you're coming from. Because at any time, you can turn back. Yeah? And I'm a person like that even till now. I don't try to exhaust myself on people. I don't try to show off. When I was when I was top of the game, top of the game, I never used to show off on people. I, I used to put on my clothes. I sit down at the roadside with my friends. If you could just like... try to turn up the volume of your microphone just a little bit or you get closer to your, your phone... Cause we seem to be hearing you a bit low. I do a Can you hear it now? A bit clear. Yeah. What 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 I used to just I'm I'm a still that guy to today, fans. I'm not a I don't show up on people. I don't people if people don't know me, I don't people don't know me. That's me. You understand? When even in my farm, even my pinker farm, I was like that, just the same. I used to go and check my friends. I sit on the roadside, same way. If they're eating, I eat with them. And just the same thing, you understand? Because all of us couldn't be on top. Who would know who is at the bottom of the line? All of us couldn't fat. Who would know who maga? All of us couldn't rich. Who would know the poor? All of us couldn't black. Who would know the white? All of us couldn't tall. Who would know the short man? So you have to think on those things, you understand? Everyone couldn't be the same. We're all the same in flesh and blood and we have one life. But everyone couldn't have the same career. And everyone's career couldn't kick off the same way. Everyone couldn't win a Grammy. Everyone couldn't get a number one song. Everyone couldn't know this. Everyone couldn't know that. So we're all here to help over each other. You know what I mean? And live for each other, not for ourselves. Because we never know what is around the corner. We never know. Thank you so much for that lecture. Now, one of the things uh, that uh, we always highlight uh, during the interview as we place you in the spotlight is the sound system culture coming from the island of Jamaica. Now, the sound system has always played a, a major role in the development of reggae music. It's been used as a vehicle to transport the vehicle around the island of Jamaica and outside as well, global market. And now the sound system back in the day, do you know what I mean, was very popular in Jamaica. This is how the music developed 
you know what I mean? This is how it was able to spread through parish to parish and through town to town. Do you know what I mean? Now, back in the 80s, Electro was one of the artists who dominated the genre. You know what I mean? And the uh, the feel that you would have received whilst performing on the, the sound system, for the benefit of our listeners out there, uh, how how would you best describe those moments, you know what I mean, whilst performing on sound system in terms of the reaction that you would have gotten from the, the fans out there? The, 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 the main thing, fans, in our days, yeah, we... We used to go and see the people outside the dance, not inside, the outside of the dance, yeah? And if they put like Papa San, Lieutenant Stitchy, Josie Will, Charlie Chaplin, whosoever is on the flyers, yeah? Make sure they're at the dance because no one is going in the dance until the artists come. No one is going in that dance. And then th you will have the sound string up from early. In those days, you used to have manish water. You used to have curry goat and thing. And the food will, be, will cook. People come and buy before the dance start or drink a cup of soup and thing like that. And then the, the music will be still playing, but no DJs on the mic or anything. Then you hear the promoter will hold the mic and he said, all for free, please clear the lawn. So the lawn is clear now, everyone out of the lawn, only the promoter who is selling in the bar, who is selling curry goat, or if you are a part of the dance. That's the only person who live in the, in the lawn now. Then you have what we call a gate man. You lock the gate, no one see in the dance. No one can see in the dance because the dance always keep like a fence around it. Yeah, it's a lawn with a fence around it. No one see inside the dance. The gate man stand at the, da at the gate and he start collect. Then you have a thing on the sound now, that name, warm-up DJ. Then the warm-up DJ will start DJing and no one is coming in, no matter how bad that warm-up DJ is, until let's see what we call ourselves the stars. If the stars don't come, no one come in. And then when the star come, we beat the gate. We, we used to come through the same gate. We never used to have a different gate to come through. So most of the people could see us come out of a taxi. In those days, not every artist have their own vehicle. We used to take taxi, taxi dropper off. The, 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 we will pay the taxi man out of our pay or the, the promoter send a car for us. The promoter send a car for us and that car go come to town, pick us up, carry us where we're going, country or where we're going. And they'll see us when we come out of the car. And then the gate man have to hold the gate strong now because the star them come. And... Josie Will, we're going, Charlie Chaplin, we're going, lecturer, we're going, Professor we're going, Papa San, we're going, our DJ, one lyrics to let them know we are in the land. One lyrics, and then the gates start tear off. So the gate man, I forget, ready now for all the gates strong because the artists come. But it's changed now. Now is the people come waiting on the artists. That's how it goes now. The, the land is packed. Artists at the backstage and they wait till the lawn is full, then they come out and perform. We never used to do that. We have to DJ to bring the crowd in. So, so it, it gives you a nice feeling when you're coming through the crowd, people will be shouting at the window, the DJ come, lecturer, Ray Ray, Ray Ray come. And the, the, the promoter, sometimes you have two or three bodyguard and he said get the dj them inside and he said move out there so you go there sir move out of the crowd move and then make a line and the, you come in you understand no matter how thick the crowd is that crowd will be sheer for you to come in it's the same crowd we the same crowd we used to pass and come in so the the the, the people used to know that we are here and then now the, the, that time the dance start now 
The dance just started. Now that's quite interesting. Now let's talk to us about whilst in the dance, what were you seeing in terms of uh, the action that was uh, carrying on in the dance? Would you describe well, it as a, a moment of joy, a moment of war, violence? What no, was actually no, happening no, in the dance at the moment? No, me not tell any, I'm not going to tell you any lie. Girls used to fight at dance. Girls used to fight at dance. It's very rare. I can remember a dance that man fight. It's girl used to fight. And most of the time when the girl let me fight, it's over the artist. Most of the time when the girl let me fight, it's over the artist. Because artists used to have all three, four girls, you know, and there's still two more girls in the dance who want a one dance after of the artist. Because what happened? Man and woman used to dance in dance because you have some man who used to take the side of the box because we'd have the big sound box them them time there. Or if it's a, if it's a land where wall, where wall is in, like a concrete lawn, like an like a auditorium or something. You have man lean him girl upon the wall and wind him girl properly and you can beg a girl to dance and a girl come dance. And when you not working because you have sound with three, four, five, six DJ. And from you mash up the crowd and rum the dance, calling the people them. You can get a break. A three, four song can play. And you know, and you know DJ. Because you have singers, you have DJ, you have other DJ in the dance. You come beg, you come beg a DJ off of the mic. He may really work with the sound, but he's a DJ in the era. And you hear a man say, big up Josie Will in the era. Josie Will, when you're ready, come in, you know. Josie Will will come in and him pop a little one tune. Little John in the era. Come sing it off, Little John. Little John, come sing it off. Same way, you understand? So you used to get a little break now, and then now a girl where eyes you. I, I, I went when them girl there eyes you, them stay near the sound. That's as you walk off, you see them. And girl look good and look good, good, and you touch her, you say, Big a little dance, and you're not go around the corner and go pop a one dance, pop a cool and deadly, or you know, nice little soul dance or something. But the, the system changed now where, when, when video. Video is a part of what mash up that culture. Video in the dance. Because a girl, we have our boyfriend and don't want to dance with you under the video because our boyfriend will see the video later. Or a man we have him woman don't want to dance with you because him girlfriend going to see the video later. So video is a part of wrecking dance hall. Video in the dance is a part of wrecking dance hall because I can show you a lot of the, a, a, a lot of dance where we beg the cameraman take the camera off for us, take the camera video man lock out the light. We don't want a light from it. You understand when video just come in, and then all the video man that turn the video in at the crowd and that the people them don't want because no flicker wanted man used to in a dance man is screechy coming a dance and no same wanted and the video run and they must say oh Tom don't a waste more land so him don't want the video catch him so video is a part of. Video, video is a part of what messed up dance hall. You understand? And then what happened now? The, you have woman over that side now, a man over that side. Can't nobody now dance with them each other again. Car video around. The thing now we are take over now is who can dance the best. Because everybody want to go now up on the video to go show how them can dance. But nobody mm. now dance with nobody. And this uh, this uh, the, 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 the dance hall really messed up with with with, with the dancing. All right, so let's get a, a, a little bit deeper into this uh, uh, in, into this uh, revolution. There, um, uh, um, we are at the point where um, it, back in the eighties, uh, uh, people would uh, more uh, have gotten together and full joy themselves, uh, uh, despite of what was happening. Do you know what I mean? After a, a, a full week of working, they would find the dance hall to come release the stress. Uh, so yeah, as a result, I, romance I, I, would develop I, I in themselves. the dance. Uh, friendship would have built in the dance but Definitely. suddenly back in the mid 90s to the early 2000s that sort of behavior changed where we yeah. mainly saw people coming into the dance with screw faces uh, people coming into the dance with uh, uh, and, uh, uh, honest... the lyrics uh, was a derogative towards women and a lot of uh, crime violence was promoted through yeah. music so that sort of changed uh, the behavior but in you the cannot, dance, you cannot and, to uh, blame. So, uh, from from your perspective as an artist who've been around, who've been there in the eighties, uh, 
what uh, do you think really triggered that 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 changes in terms of the lyrical content we heard from the artists by the the mid 90s and also the attitude do you know what i mean from uh, um uh, being uh friendly and 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 joy uh, joyful to uh being violent and aggressive in the dance what would have triggered those things from well, your perspective you know, i heard people i heard people say that music cannot change anyone yeah music cannot change anyone but i don't go with that because i tell you something about me i tell you from a little bit they say self praise is no recommendation, but I don't believe that either. Because my mom could self praise herself. She grew 11, 11 of us. It wasn't 13 that time, 11 of us. Yeah. And she grew five. Let me see. Romy, Raymond, Mark, me, four, four boy Pitney. Put it five, five boys. In towel, and none of the police never tell none of we for walk past. Yeah, so my mom could self praise herself, and she grows without without father. Mm. I'm not gonna self praise myself, but I'm telling you, they say music cannot change people, but I don't believe that. I think music can inspire you to do things, but it cannot make you do it. And I'm going to explain myself. If I tell you how to bake a cake, yeah? And I give you the recipe, the recipe on how to bake the cake. You don't buy the recipe so the cake can't bake. No matter how you understand how to do it, understand, you know to do it, you can't even do it out of your head to what I tell you. You don't even have to look at the, the recipe. Without buying the recipe, you cannot bake the cake. The, and the, the meaning of that is when they're singing about gun song, gun song, gun song, gun song, yes, it can inspire you to do things. But if you don't get the gun, you cannot do it. So I wouldn't still blame the music that is it cause the shooting. Yeah, I would blame the person who bring in the gun for them to get the gun, if you understand what I'm saying. So in our time, in our time, the changes of music, of reggae music, I know where the changes come from. Every sound try to follow Stone Love. Every sound try, you're hearing me? Yes, of course. Yeah, every sound try to follow Stone Love. And Stone Love was originally made as a soul sound. Stone Love never used to use DJ. But it's like every sound get, I would say like red eye, what we use in a Jamaican term, to go after Stone Love, who is predominant in the music fraternity. Stone Love run Jamaica inside out to put the truth stole of run the world yeah so whatever sound start to do i say black scorpio metro media king jammings arrows you name the rubber dub sound is only one man i put up my hand to till this blessed day is not with us god bless his soul rest in peace you right Uri was the only one that didn't change his sound from a rubber dub sound till this blessed day. Uri was always using mic and sound and turntable singers and DJ till this blessed day. Every other sound turned the sound to turntable, to turntable and select, select a turn DJ. And, and now we were playing with like Stone Love. Everyone was following Stone Love, and that's what changed the aspect of dancehall. But what finally crashed dancehall? I tell you four names now that finally crashed dancehall. One is Futter Hype. One is 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 what's his name? Mataran. One is 
Fire Links and one is Ricky Chopper. Those four wreck dance hall, the four of them put together and wreck dance hall. You see this laptop thing where them bring in? No sound, no this, no this, this laptop thing, that right off reggae music. If we don't careful, there won't be any reggae in the next three years. If we don't careful. That's what really lick reggae music into a wall. Futter hype, Mataran, um, Tony Mata, 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 Mata uh, Ricky Chupa, one name, where, 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 where name? I'll just call the four of them names. We, we come from down at Tivoli and a few little more, but they were the main one who wreck reggae music. And sometimes I try, I try to get in touch with Futa, you know, Futa Hype. A lot of people know Futa Hype. He's big, ent- um, um, what you call it, selector and big MC. But I want to ask Futa Hype a few questions. And I found him a few times, but he'll never answer me. I don't know why. I, I, I tell him, I text him, everything. He'll never answer me because he knows the question. I'm going to ask him. It's going to hit him. Because one thing with Futa, he talks like what he say in reggae music is final. There's no other option. There's no opinion, nothing. What Futa I say is final. And Futa I just started playing music day before yesterday. My mom would say, he just come to the bar. I'm drunk. You understand? He just come to the bar. I'm drunk. What do you know about music? He know nothing about music. And he's talking like if, if a song is sing and footer hype don't pass it, it don't pass. If a reggae music sing, if a DJ is talking and he said the DJ don't good, the DJ don't good. Nothing don't go like that. You understand? Now, having said that, uh, lecturer, you've mentioned that uh, what really crashed down so it's that's what of, Yeah. That's uh, my uh, opinion. Uh, more than that's, that's my However, opinion. You also mentioned that um, the lyrics uh, can be very influential over the masses. Uh, now, uh, what about those persons? Uh, we're talking about the artists who uh, come up with lyrics such as uh, promoting uh, violence. Uh, do you know what I mean? Promoting okay. um, me... um, gun violence. Just hang on. And also being derogative towards women. When those songs come out, do you know what I mean? People are singing it. People are patterning to it, you know what I mean? Okay. And as a result, people are acting it out as well. Okay. So, uh, let me, let don't me, you let agree me say something. that uh, those songs are having a negative impact on the masses out there? Okay. Let me, let me explain something And don't something you also you think now. that you, as an artist, also yeah, have a yeah. moral responsibility when, in our days, when it comes to the lyrics that we hear coming from artists? All right. In our days, Fancy, yeah? You know, if you go to a dance, we used to say punani, yeah? Punani. Nowadays, DJ wouldn't say punani. They would, they would put it more derogative. You understand? I, I can't remember me ever do a gun song. I never do a gun song. Never in my career I sing about a gun. I never sing about gun song. The most I will sing about mama man and about lesbian and about and about gays and about I never sing about gun and to kill people and this thing. I don't DJ those songs. But let me let me let me let me defend the DJs who do that. And I'm not gonna say it is right, but I'm gonna defend them in the sense of knowledge. Yeah. When you start to DJ, when I start to DJ, my aim was to be like Josie Whale, Charlie Chaplin. Brigadier Jerry, Rankin Joe, Uroy, those was my idol who I am aiming for people to rate me like them. You understand? That's my aim when I start to DJ because those are my idol who I want to follow. Okay. Being the man, Bounty Killer, the rest of them, if when people start DJ, I know every artist right now in Jamaica would like to be where Cartel is, where Bean Man is, where Bounty Killer is. Don't matter who from them start to DJ, they would like to reach there. Every female DJ would like to be like where Spice is. So what happened if Spice is saying, run me down and chop me up? 
those DJ are going to say, run me down and chop me up because those are the idols that they worship, that they want to be like. So it don't make no sense. You have a market that's selling kalalo and you bring mango to the market. It's not going to sell because it's a kalalo market to bring it. The fans also have a lot to take responsibility and blame for because if the DJ go up, I said, dirty girl, nasty girl, them, Ray! Why you think the DJ going to do? You think he's going to change that? He's not going to change that because that's what the crowd going for. You cannot sell, you cannot sell, as I say, Aki in breadfruit market. If it's a breadfruit market, have you ever seen they bring a fowl to a slaughterhouse? They only bring animal to a slaughterhouse. You understand what I mean? So, Everyone who is DJing, they have an aim. They have an aim. As soon as they start DJ, ask every female DJ now where they want to go. They want to reach where Lady Saw reach, where, where, where Spice reach, where Chelsea reach. That's where the aim is. Ask every, 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 every male artist. Oh, I would like to reach where Cartel reach. I would like to reach where Beedman is. I'd like to reach where Bunty Killer is. I'd like to reach. Because when we start DJ, that was my aim. I want people to rate me like how the rate Brigadier Jerry, like how the rate Charlie Chaplin, like how the rate, rate, rate Papa San, like how the rate Josie Whale. That's my aim. So what I do, I try to DJ things that they DJ. So if these DJ weren't DJing about gun, they are the DJs them wanna do it. And the next thing, the next thing, what what I hate to hear, I don't like to hear it any at all. Legend. Who is a legend? I heard everyone. Oh, Bunty Killer is a legend. This one is a legend. Bunty Killer just start DJ the other day. Here, pretend. I would say yes, he can join the legend line. Being a man, proper legend. Because we used to put being a man on box to DJ in my rest of Benji. We are talking about in the 80s, early 80s. Being a man a DJ from being a man about nine years old. General Trees. What would you call General Trees? If you're going to call Bounty Killer a legend, what would you call General Trees? What would you call Josie Whale? What would you call Brigadier Jerry? What would you call Rankin Joe? Even, even that guy, um, Welton Irie. What would you call them? I mean, icon in the business, yes. But legend, where legend come from? What do, do, speak, do, speak, do people really know what's the meaning of legend when you're the legend? Do they know what it really means when they say legend? So what I'm trying to tell you, I'm not going to blame any artist for the songs that they sing. I'm going to blame, blame to who retaliate to the song. Because if you go three market, if you go three morning straight with some breadfruit in Aki market, none of your breadfruit sell, you're going to stop go to the market so because they take to the music that they are singing everyone want to sing it how can you blame them you can't blame them what you're gonna take what are you gonna get in the music world if you're not doing what the other rest doing the one that make it and you're not doing that how you're gonna make it you can't make it when you go to school what you do you listen what the teacher say and what the teacher teach you that's what you learn so that's what they are saying, and that's I what I understand where you're coming from, and I could appreciate what you're saying, but I still think, in my yeah. opinion, that, that every artist do yeah. have a moral responsibility is yeah. as it relates to the sort of lyrics that we hear coming from artists, because as we would both agree that music is life and life is music, and I music agree is very with powerful, you. very influential. I agree and with it you. It has impact on people's lives, whether it might be positive. Or a negative. I, I uh, agree because of with those you. reasons, I think artists do have a moral responsibility as it relates to the type of lyrics that we hear coming Definitely. from them. I um, agree uh, with Of course, uh, at this moment, my name is Afonso Black and I'm talking to a, a dancehall reggae artist, Lecturer. Now, Lecturer uh, is coming from the 80s and he's one of the artists who was the first one to come up with a three-part song. Now, you heard me, people. A three-part song. And he did it back in that time. Do you know what I mean? And after many 
followed. Now, we'll be going for a song break, and we'll be taking a piece from each of the songs, those three songs, you know what I mean? And when we come back, we'll have a, a lecture to tell us the myths, the uh, inspiration behind that three-part song right here on UBC Radio, the sound that binds us together. Let's get straight into the three-part song by Lecture. I 
today, of course, uh, my name is Fonz Black, and I'm talking to dancehall reggae artist, a lecturer. And in the background, we heard four, three songs. Tonight's a three-part song. Eh? The first song, the title, Buckle Up, and the second one, uh, DJ I Look Me, and the final one was uh, DJ Find Me. And those uh, three adding up songs, you know I mean? It's all connected, three parts, you know what I mean? Now, again, like I mentioned, uh, uh, a lecturer was one of the first persons uh, who've uh, done that from uh, Jamaica. And then soon after, we've seen, uh, you know I mean, other artists uh, follow. Again, uh, the title tracks of the three songs, uh, Buckle Up, uh, uh, DJ Alok Me, and DJ Find Me. Uh, over to you. Welcome back again, uh, lecturer. Now, yeah. that song, you know what I mean? Like, uh, when you did the first song, Buckle Up, do you know what I mean? You would have done the first song, Buckle Up. Uh, did you have, uh, by the time you did the first song, was it already in mind that you would have done a second part to that song? Not, how, not how, how, how did this all happen? Because not the really, one, you know, not up. really, but to, to we continue writing, you know? To we continue writing. As I tell you, inspiration is in writing. Yeah, inspiration is in writing. So when I do Buckle Up, I was listening it back. And I it do was apologize, like, listeners. Uh, uh, we are trying to get with uh, the artist. I think we've uh, uh, kind of lost him there. Uh, You're not we're hearing really me. Trying to get him as soon as possible. Seems to be having some uh, technical uh, difficulty there. Once again, listeners, I do apologize. However, we are placing um, dancehall reggae artist lecture in the spotlight as he revealed his story behind his big story to understand the culture of reggae music coming from the island of Jamaica. Yeah, hear me? Answer, yeah, yeah, me. Yo, lecture. Yeah, hear me? Yeah, I can hear you now. All right. But I don't know what happened a while ago. Just a minute, just a minute. Yeah. Welcome back again, um, uh, lecture. Are you there? Yeah, I'm here. I'm here. You can hear me? Are you with us? Yeah, I'm with you. All I'm right, then, of you. course. Uh, we've uh, um, early on, like we when we went for the song break, we heard a, a, a three part song, and the first uh, uh, title track was uh, uh, Buckle Up, and the second one, DJ I'll Find Me, and the last one, DJ Find Me. Now, uh, again, uh, like we mentioned, you was one of the first persons who came up with uh, be such creative and come up with such idea, making a song with three parts, you know what I mean, to it. Uh, now, when you did the first one, uh, Buckle Up, did you have any uh, um, intention of, of doing a, a second part of that song? Not, not, not really, but it's inspiration. We are always writing, you know? And when I hear the first song, I said, there could be a second, yeah, because in those days, um, entertainer never used to war. We war on the mic, like sound clash, yeah, and we war on the mic. But as we finish, that's it. You understand? We, 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 you, you, you war with lyrics, not with gun and knife and stone and buckle and bad mind and things. You war with lyrics. So after putting out that lyrics, I was telling myself, say, oh, if DJ hear that now, they're going to look for me. But I, I used to I used to travel a lot. So I never really like in Jamaica, you know? I used to travel a lot. So I never like in Jamaica. So I was in America when I write DJ I look for me. And when I when I come down back a vice, DJ I look for me for jammings. And then I say, wait. But if the DJ them a look for me, I can write a lyrics so the DJ them find me. And I still did have part four. I still did have part four, but I never vice part four. I did have part four where I find back the DJ them. 
First one I find was Professor Nuts. Me just block the road, take him out time bus, give him two small lick and a small a small cut. Him and Bailey live near, so me no in a no rush, cause Bailey belly. Me know me have a bus. Me send Charmy and go sleep and she can't wake up. Me just get piece of rope and tie her up and make all of my brethren them give her a butt. But who can tell me a West Stitchy there? It looks like the dread them make him run away. You understand? Me did have the part four. But me never vice the part four. So it's four part of it me did right. Wow. Now that's, that's very creative there. Yeah, uh, very four talented part of it by yourself, right because... uh, a lecturer. To have when it write, and it, it, it connects, each of them connects because yeah, the first each one of them kind of can be used, be used, you know what I mean? And you were like, like, like basically, um, 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 giving them talks and, and showing chats at them. And then uh, you, after, after, upon doing that, you know, what I mean, the next lyrics was, you know, what I mean, the DJs now heard what you said, uh, yeah, they, start they looking for me, at you, and now they are <laughs> looking for you, you get me, yeah, you know I mean? so they are looking for you, they're now, looking for me you now. <laughs> And then, uh, looking after upon me, looking for you for days and weeks and months, they actually yeah. finally found they you. They actually you know find me. Now find you. And, and, <laughs> and then you after a, them a deal with me, you know, <laughs> after them deal with me, you know, me go find them back. But I never, I never vice the part four. You understand? But me go find them back. But those, those days, those days, lyrics we used to war with. DJ never used to war. We war with the lyrics and the mic. Mm. You come war with me and the mic. You understand? We never used to shoot after each other and take rocks to and bad mind with each other and do those things. You understand? We used to war on the mic. And after the dance finish, we all laugh after we each other. Who get killed, get killed. You understand? And who dead, just dead. And we laugh. But we never used to vex with each other. You understand? Now, of course, uh, tell me that Punani uh, Too Sweet song, uh, the first time you got the opportunity to perform that on stage outside Jamaica, what was the crowd reaction? Oh, Where was the location? You know, the first, place, you on stage? <laughs> the first place I performed that song was in Florida. Florida. A man named, hold on, I soon tell you his name, Radigan, but not David Radigan. It was Radigan. He were, his name was Radigan on the radar. Tall black man. He's dead now. That man is dead now. Bless his soul. Rest in peace. Radigan. And to tell you the honest truth, the show was, was planned. And then now I flew in Florida for about four or five days before the show. So it was going around to the radio station. And Radigan said, in the house is lecturer singing Puno and Too Sweet. And believe you me, Fanso, when I go outside the studio, the radio studio, it was like I was Michael Jackson. A lot of people out there waiting for me, waiting just to know, just to know this lecturer, you know? A lot of people out there just want to know who is this lecturer that sing this. Because this song was a big song, you know? was a big song, big, massive song, this. Because anywhere you go so, so now... So on stage now, a lecturer, whilst performing on stage in Miami, um, whilst performing that song, what was the, the, the reaction oh, of the Gina. crowd? How you know were what you I used, to connect with the people? You know what I used to do? I used to have more lyrics that I talk, and then I keep that one for the last. Then I used to, I used to just put on it too sweet, it too sweet, it too sweet, and run off the stage. And they have to call me back. That's the, that's that I used to do. They always call me back because they want to hear it. And I DJ three line again and run off. And they call me back again because they want that song to finish. So that's what <laughs> I used to do. <laughs> 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 but that song was a big song, man. It was a big. It's, I tell you to the honest truth. That song still, still is a big song. I tell you the honest truth. It still is a big song. And in all the travels, uh, Alexa, where was the biggest, uh, your, your biggest uh, performance that you would always have in in mind? And how did you know? I mean, those people made you feel. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Whilst on stage, uh, take us those moments. You know what I mean? The biggest, uh, you know, biggest, I mean, the biggest, the biggest crowd 
It's too big crowd I've seen in my career. Too big crowd. So reggae sun splash, and there was a reggae show in California. Me, Super Cat, me, Super Cat, and Dennis Brown and Frankie Paul. And to tell you the honest truth, I was not that mature in the business. I wasn't that mature. And I tell you, fans, so when I go on the stage, when they said, I know on stage, cause who first work? Frankie Paul work. Then, then me. Frankie Paul, then me. Then there was a gun mate. Dennis Brown, then Supercat closed the show. Frankie Paul work. And when, when they said lecturer, and fan so when I go on the stage, because all this time I was backstage and not seeing the crowd. I'm not seeing the crowd. And all this time I was backstage and they said, now on stage, lecturer. And fan so when I go on the stage, as far as I can look, it was like Majestic Square Garden. The place was that big. And as far as I could look, I could see people. And I was like, my God, if these people ever say boo, I'm dead. There was like, we're talking about nearly like 25, 27, 30,000 people in LA. When I said pack, it was like a festival pack. And I go up there and listen, man. And listen, about three times they called me back, man. And I still didn't DJ Punani too sweet as yet. That was the last. I always do that song last when I go on stage. I always do that song last. And then I, I then when I do that song, they call me back and call me back. But that is too big, big, massive crowd I can remember. No, lie, I'm telling you now. There was another crowd in Montego Bay, the same place where, where Reggae Sun Splash used to keep, Jared Park. Tangal. Kangal and, and Cosmic Force. Kangal and Cosmic Force. Kangal and Cosmic Force was a big, big dance. It's still on, it's still on YouTube and up till now. It was a big, big dance that. The name Lecture. How did you come up with that name? Lecture. Lecture. Quite interesting. Okay. When we go on Love Child, there was professor on Love Child. Professor. So I used to go by the name Papa Manley. But you know, in our time, politics was serious. Yeah? So there's a certain era, you're not going to kind of go and say your name, Papa Manley. So the owner for Love Child changed the name and said, in the university, you have the professor and you have the lecturer. And that's how I get the name lecturer. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He said one name professor and one name lecturer. So that's how I get the name lecturer. Yeah. You've since migrated uh, to the UK. Um, what was that transition like from um, coming from uh, Jamaica and now uh, having living in the UK? What was the cultural <laughs> shock? when you, you go see, there, and how did it uh, impact on your career? Yeah, the UK, living in the UK was like, not my choice, but a coincidence, living in the UK. You'd have to give me a different interview for that story. It's too long. <laughs> it's, it's, it was like a coincidence, but we never fly in the almighty face, yeah? The almighty know everything. Because maybe I was in, I was still in Jamaica. I would be rich. People start to try to kill me, or I would, people would bad mind me and things like that. So we have to just give thanks for life, yeah. But it wasn't my intention of living in the UK. Living in the UK was like coincident. It's like a compulsory rather than choice. Uh, thank you so much for that. And uh, for those artists, uh, younger artists out there wanting to become uh, a superstar, uh, uh, established artists out there, what advice would you give to those uh, younger artists 
uh, but in terms of allowing them to remain humble like yourself, uh, despite of all the fame that came with your success, uh, you obviously remain humble and grounded. So what advice would you say to younger artists coming out and wanting to become where you are? Uh, what would you say to them, uh, lecturer? I'll give them this advice. Respect your elders. That's the first thing you're going to do is respect your elders. The next thing you to do, always remember, is the crowd that make you and the crowd can break you. Always remember that. Don't show off on the crowd. Don't think you are better than the crowd. Always remember the crowd make and the crowd break. Because without the fans, you are nothing. Anywhere in the world you go, if you don't have any fans, you are you could have the you could have seven number one tune, eight, ten number one tune, and you don't have any fan. No one gonna book you. Because if you don't have fans, no one is coming to your show. So always remember, it's the people that make you and it's the people that break you. But the main important thing in your career, always remember where you're coming from, not where you're going. Where you're coming from, because at any time you can turn back. And you can get lost if you don't Thank remember. Thank you so much where for that. And from. where do you see reggae music currently? And where do you hope to see reggae in the next five years? Well, reggae music can't die. A lot of people say reggae music, dancehall, dancehall, maybe taking a shaking up, but reggae music on the whole can't die. It, it will never die. Reggae music is here to stay. You understand? Because I think it was here before last, I do a show in France. Was it France? Yeah, France. And it's turntable I see they're using over there. And Mike is like reggae just reach over there. You understand? So there's no, in no time, no time, reggae don't have time to die. Reggae is here to stay. All we have to do is the young artists them now, the elders to stop fight against them and try hard to do some collaboration with them to spread the thing further. You understand? Because it's like these young guys, young artists take the music to another level. Yeah? It's like they take it to come. Maybe when we start DJ, People used to say, what them, what, what them really are doing? Because they used to Josie Whale, Charlie Chaplin, Brigadier Jerry, I Roy, Rankin Joe, you Roy. They used to them. So when we come as the second batch, come in now, they might be saying, oh, I don't know what lecturer I do. I don't know what general trees I do. I, I, I don't like for them lyrics. But they, they, they take on to it. I was still 15 with Josie Whale them. We still fit in with Charlie Chaplin. We still fit in with anyone who was in it before us. So what they to do? They to try and do some collaboration. Cause these these young artists, these these young artists now, fancy. Mm. They they doing music, but they don't have experience of shows. You understand? Because mm. I've I seen them. I've seen them perform. I've seen them perform. The other day, I go to Brackwell in, in uh, Caperton, Chelsea, um, Beanie Man, Anthony B. I can't remember who else. But I never say Beanie Man and I never say Anthony work. I never hear them. When I was going in, I hear Beanie Man. Anthony B was on the stage, and the time I reached in, because the crowd was heavy, the time I reached in, Beanie Man was working. When I reached there now, the tape break, and then Chelsea come, and and then um, Caperton. 
And it's, I think it's 13 years Caperton don't come to England. I think it's 13 years. And I tell you, the guy, the guy come like he was here yesterday. It's like the old, the old, the old, the old park mm. was, was dear. It, you know, the, the vibes that, that the man bring. So these new artists mm. that is working now, they, they, they don't have that experience. They talk mm. two lyrics and they turn the mic to the crowd and they will call up people to come whine and they call up people to come dance and those things because they, they don't have no stage appearance. Performance is different from recording. You understand? Performance is different. You see, Sky Juice is a selector mm. at high rate, Sky Juice. You will play a music in a dance, I've seen it so many times. You will play a song in the dance, and the crowd is dead. And Sky Juice play back that same song, but to see to how we introduce that song and then play it, it rip the crowd. So you have experiencing things. You understand? The, these guys, the, yeah, the guys they can they can write okay and they can sing and okay they can. But performance, I don't rate them in performance. So they need to learn that from us. You understand, Carl? When it comes to performance, same like how you say, elephant acting now. It's Tiger. That's how Tiger used to go on. You understand? So mm. at least um, elephant learned that from Tiger. You understand what I'm saying, Fancy? Mm hmm Yeah. And then you have a next one. I think one time um my DJ, female DJ, one time was um Lady G and and Tanya Stevenson. Lady G was bad bad DJ. Then who come now? Who you think I rate now? Lady Saw. Yep. But Lady Saw is chopping lyrics just as how Lady G used to chop lyrics. You understand? She talking lyrics. You know what I mean? And when ladies are perform on a stage, she don't only have lyrics, but she have performance. So they, Absolutely. They, they, yeah, the new artists, them, they need to learn that. Yeah, you have your hot song and you go up on the stage, and you turn the mic to the crowd and the crowd starts help you. You understand what I mean? You, the crowd start happy. You need to perform, dance, jump, kick. That's reggae music. And the same thing you're doing on the stage. Look at Caperton. When Caperton work, Caperton will jump high up in the skate. Caperton will tell us, over there, so put up your hand and we have, you know, he, 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 he met the crowd join in with him. You understand? That's performance. That's how we used to do it. So the only message I have to them is keep doing what you're doing. No, I don't, I don't have I don't have nothing against the new artists. Nothing at all. The, the only thing I don't like with them, they don't have any respect for the elders. Because it, bear in mind, Fanso, if you build a house, yeah? A house is built, not even you build it, a house is built. And that house costs one million dollar. If you even put one dollar to make that million dollar, you help buy the house. If it's even one dollar you put, once is that one dollar make the million, you help buy the house. So have respect for the elders because if all the artists that is start DJ in Jamaica and start to sing was still around, where would you new artists find a little space? There wouldn't be no space there for you. Uh, thank you so much for that. My name is Fonse Black and I'm talking to dancehall reggae artist and lecturer as we place him in the spotlight to reveal some of his story behind the big story to help understand the culture of reggae music. Africa, America, Europe, Caribbean by extension. This is yeah. the moment that you all have been waiting for, as we now will be placing dancehall reggae artists, lecturer, in the spotlight to give us an a cappella. Go for it, lecturer. <laughs> <laughs> 
the lyrics I like, the lyrics where I like still is a, a, a lyrics I wrote. I said, send a letter to my mommy and send one for my daddy. Tell him send me there in New York. I me have plenty money. Come now. Me just write me letter, me I go. Write me letter, come now. Write me letter, me I go. Write me letter, me write, dear daddy. Oh, keeping. I hope you not kill mama with beating. Me are your one son, I'm a day of foreign. I also some you was to finish up the building. I only hope you stop the rum drinking, the smoking, the bleaching, and the gambling. Me did poor down there. But now me get rich. The DJ business and me rule it away. Send on a video with a video. Again, send on a video with a computer switch. The video of you so take good care of it. So find out the cost for your satellite dish. Hamas that a Benzara under civics. No tell nobody. Send me gay America. Just get the help of a work with mama. The help of must be around a fair quarter. No help of no teeth. No, no rubber. Pity for the crockery of the furniture. The help of must be around a fair quarter. Me go send three barrel in a December. So one half for you and one for mama. I left the next one from Craig is corner. Say tell the whole of them, we stay easy. You're going to make them wear chain like Mr. T. Say, oh, it's short and rusty. Because you had Craig Cat and Wimpy. Me not tell you like me miss everybody. Me buy a big house and me live in a eh. We don't pretty little girl when me call me Dolly. Me no want no more girl cause she suit me. The ears up here yeah, and me no want catch eh. You remember times gone when we used so hungry. And just call me around. And Miss Matty and all three week pass. We can't pay for you and as we and our ketchup. She take it tell we know them the day's done. He can't come again. I can't buy Miss Matty shop and our children. So always Mass Joe and Auntie Carmen. Me not tell no lie, Miss the two of them. Send a big money when me write again. Bye bye, no daddy, cause the writing done. Me close with love lecture, your big son, me ball. Write me letter, me ago. Yeah, man, lyrics, you know? So that's what I'm talking about, people. Of course, you heard it live on air. <laughs> Lecture is still live yeah. and living color, still kicking people. Yeah. Lecture, people. Of course, you've been giving us conscious dance and music from the 80s. You've given us hits like Funani, Too Sweet, and the one you just heard there, and many more. You fool me. Don't forget to check them out on uh, Facebook, Instagram, or you could check his videos on uh, YouTube. Uh, again, yeah. uh, his name is a Lecturer. Right, now, let me just say, if there is a promoter out there who just heard this performance and would like to book you on your event, what is the best contact to get you on, Lecturer? Yeah, the best contact to get me at is 07-944-966-192. That's England number. If it's from Jamaica, it's 01144. Anywhere over the other the rest of the world is 01144. But if it's in England, it's just 07 And I want to send a big request to my sister, Dimper. You know, say, I love you. My son, Faison, my daughter, Tuana. You know, say, I want to, one of my father and one of my mother. I want to know that. Yeah? All right. And I want to big up all my fans. Yeah, Bradley, we is friends for 40 years and we never have an argument. Yeah? And we still have to do it till 80 more years and, and 11 more years. Yeah. Don't worry yourself, Patrick. You are the second brother. Yeah. All of my sisters, all of my brothers, and all of my fans. Lecturer, love you. Righteous. You know, so we are friends from Wapikil Philip. Yeah. And you know, so we still friends. Cotty, Mr. Lee, I love you like steamed fish. Yeah. One thing we have to tell everyone. Yeah. Don't grudge no one. And the greatest thing in the world the greatest thing in the world is life no matter how much millions you have if you don't have life you have nothing the greatest thing in the world is life but the greatest thing in life let lecturer tell you this is to know you'll never know what's gonna happen so do good and good will follow you. Bless up all of my fans, them lecturers here, and giving you thanks and praise for the treatment and the support what you give me over the years of my career. Fanso, I love you like a brother, my brother. 
And of course, if persons out there would like to hear more music coming from a lecturer, what are some of the platforms that to get your music on? Yeah, YouTube. Just go on YouTube or go Instagram. Lecturer Big Ed, yeah? Just go Lecturer Big Ed. Yeah, our Facebook, Big Ed Lecturer. Just put in that. Our, our Instagram, YouTube. Any one of them. All of me tune them different YouTube still. So you can just put in them. And what is them. the next big project that currently Lecturer is working on that your fans could expect coming from yeah, yourself well, you very see, soon? What, what really happened now, soon now, soon now, um, fans, uh, a lot of people is asking me, say, get back in the studio let, because they don't really like the, the, the lyrics that is out there now. But what happened, what these people to understand, the young generation love what is going on. You understand? So you have to, you have to, you have to feed the young generation. It's, it's their time now. You understand? They have to give them, you have to accept what they are doing because it's their time now. But what I'm telling the promoters is that people out there that would like to hear the old artists, them still DJ. You understand? So if they can keep some show by mixing, mixing the crowd, you understand? Let everyone happy. Because you have some people that will never listen to these young artists. They're not going. You understand? They're not going because they don't used to that. You understand? And you have some elderly, you have some young people that not listening to the elderly. You understand? But if you mix the elder, and the, and the, and you mix the elder and the youngie together, then you get the two crowd together. And maybe, just by maybe, an elder can say, oh, but him not sound too bad. That young artist not sound too bad. Or a young person can say, oh, I love his song, man. It don't sound too bad. Then each one can tell that one. I say, that one not too bad, you know, you can still go and go listen to him, you know. You understand? But these promoters now, they're splitting the crowd. They're splitting the crowd, and that's what driving away the reggae. It is what's driving away. You understand? Mix the crowd, mix it, and that will be good also. Mix the crowd because even when Charlie Chaplin them used to DJ Josie Whelan, they used to put we on the show also. We were before them. You understand? And we still have our crowd. We give a look forward and thing. But when Josie Whelan come, when you ride them come and uh, uh, the, the place mash up, and we know that. But we do our little part and the and we look we little fans, please. And gone. But these promoters now they're splitting the crowd. They want to put all the young ones together and all the elders together. You mix the crowd, mix it, and see what happens. Lexra, it has been a pleasure placing you in the spotlight as you reveal your story behind your big story to help understand the culture of reggae music coming from the island of Jamaica. Just before we come to an end of this interview is there anyone out there you would like to shout out to yeah man i want i want to shout out i want to shout out to king jammy yeah open the eyes of my of me him really give me the the inspiration to go on i want to give a big request to v rocket yeah in nottingham is the next sound that where Give me some, they, 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 they open my eyes to, you understand? I want to say anywhere where Papa San is, although I know you're not in this now, I want to give you a big request to, yeah? And thank you over the years for what you have done for me. I am grateful for it, yeah? I never forget you, my brother. You are like a brother to me, yeah? And I want to big up all the artists, them. All the artists, whether you is a veteran, whether you is a legend, whether you is a top or low, and all I want to see is some unity, unity in the dance hall. Before I go, I need to say this. You know that DJ named, named Merciless. Merciless died because I think a lot of us have responsibility for Merciless death. We turn our back on him, you know, and he didn't have anyone to cry to. So he turned to something else. Don't make that happen to no more DJ. Give a helping hand. If you can do a collab with someone, if you can, you hear about a show where you can put on someone, don't scrape the thing for you alone. The cake is big. Everyone can get a slice. Everyone can get a slice. Let's live with love and unity in the music fraternity. Please, I beg you, yeah? Big up all of the DJ them. I love you, all of the females. I love you. 
all of the promoters, all of the selectors, all the, 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 the who involved in music. I pray that the most high guide and keep us all and let me live to say that reggae music is the biggest music throughout the world. Thank you very much. Well, thank you so much, uh, Dancehall Reggae Artist Lecture. And also, I would like to big up to Sugar over in Roselands Avenue. That's in Coventry for making the connection. Big up to Sugar again and the entire Roseland connection from Coventry. Pressure them. Big up yourselves. Sam yeah, Ron, and I want to big Mr. up Naya. I want to big up Naya in Fire. Yeah, from Fire in Bristol. Yeah, Naya. You used to play a jamming song. You, you'd have me under your wing, yeah? I want to big up Naya. Only we can say when we want the music to pull up, we say Naya, and you know the music to pull up. All right. Uh, thank you so much. Of course, we're going to end this one with uh, Punani Too Sweet by the artist. Uh... What kind of sickness, diabetes, but all right, hey, original, hello, uh-huh, uh-uh, 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 uh-uh,